regiment are trooped and it receives its new beadle. in the service this evening, the consecration of the colour. The command of the Royal Air Force. Down below me now, the car of the Commodore, the Royal Navy, is just drawing up. to his place in the stands. Arriving now is the car of the Deputy Commander, Land Forces. Major General Derek Horsford and Mrs. Horsford. to move up into the stands to their seats. Here arriving now is the car of the Colonial Secretary. Here, Norman Walker. As he too disappears into the crowd behind the dais. And now taking their places, the reception party waiting the car of the commander British forces. The car is now approaching the dais. see the difference in dress of the men on parade. The 
white that you can see signifies the infantry element of this regiment and the green the reconnaissance element. But now the noise of the spectators indicates that a car of His Excellency the Governor has now entered the stadium, preceded by his two outriders, and is moving slowly forwards now towards the dais. Everybody down below me now craning forward to try and get a glimpse of His Excellency as he arrives. The main block of spectators behind the dais standing up. goes up onto the dais where he will receive a general salute. something about the history of this regiment. Volunteer service in Hong Kong began in 1854 due to the imagined danger in the colony at that time. It started with a call from the colonial secretary for military volunteers and to this call there were 99 volunteers who stepped forward and signed. The members are still remembered every dining in night, every dinner night in the officers' mess when a toast is still drunk to the 99. The unit formed in 1854 didn't in fact last very long. It was soon disbanded and then reformed again in 1862 disbanding again another four years later after enthusiasm diminished slightly. This, of 
Wales was due to return to more settled times. And this has been the history of the regiment in its early days. Inspection party now passing the number three guard in their green uniform, standing in front of their vehicles. And here, this of course is the armoured element, the reconnaissance element. The two main elements here being the infantry and the reconnaissance. This reflects the dual role of the regiment as a whole. And this dual role comes really from the colony itself, the topography of the colony. Their main role being reconnaissance. There are in fact so many places to which vehicles cannot get that infantry are an essential part. There may be many people wondering why a parade of this nature should take place in the evening when, after all, it is almost traditional that a parade would take place in the daytime. This evening's parade is well chosen. The added spectacle of the colour under floodlights at night is one reason, but another more important reason is that it reflects again the training and history of the regiment itself. The men of this regiment are not regulars. They all have their own civilian jobs and they are volunteers. Therefore, they train and work whilst the rest of the world is at play. They train overnight and over the weekends. And here is the inspecting party moving back to the days. focused on number one guard. The whole parade, with the exception of number one guard, is now standing at ease. Number one guard is going to form the escort to the colours. Marching forward in line. Moving round now to lead on behind the band.
now is passing the days to the tune of the British Grenadiers. Now you see number one guard, commanded by Major DJ Duncan Smith, the escort to the old colours. earlier that this was the band of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers, the Hong Kong Regiment being a volunteer organization of course does not have its own regimental band. And there you see the old colors about colours. The origin of the custom of carrying colours goes back almost to the days of early man who used to fix his family badge to a pole or staff and hold it aloft in battle really for the dual purpose of both indicating his position and acting as a, a rallying point should the occasion arise. Medieval chivalry of course followed the same idea when armorial bearings were placed on banners so that they could be seen well above the melee. Custom was continued by armies on the adoption of the system of regimentation at the beginning of the 17th century. And here you see another bit of tradition. Where the old colour is handed over by a field officer to an ensign. And it is traditional that colours are carried by junior officers. to be trooped. Trooping, of course, is done with great ceremony and solemnity. It's a very solemn, sad occasion. These colours, which have been honoured and revered, will very soon be put to rest for the, for the last time. Looking 
at this parade now, it's hard to believe that this that we're seeing is not a regular unit. These are, in fact, volunteers. A terrific standard. on parade comes to the present arms as the colors are trooped through the ranks. One might wonder why the colors are always carried by a junior officer. This in some ways reflects a feeling of trust and confidence in youth. to the Hong Kong Volunteer Defence Corps. These, in fact, were lost during the Second World War, having been buried to prevent them falling into enemy hands when the Japanese attacked Hong Kong in December 1941. After the liberation of the colony in 1945, all efforts to trace them failed until 1957, when the foundations of the present United States consulate were being dug. And the rem remnants are now displayed in St. John's Cathedral, After the war, the Hong Kong Volunteer Defence Corps was disembodied and placed in suspended animation. During this period, replacement colours for those lost in the war were authorised, but by the time they were ready for presentation, the Hong Kong Volunteer Defence Corps had itself been replaced by the Hong Kong Defence Force. In 1951, these replacement colours, the old colours that are on parade today, were in fact presented to the survivors of the Hong Kong Defence Corps. And these were immediately handed over to the Hong Kong Regiment for safekeeping. to its predominantly infantry organization and role at that time. Since 1961, the Hong Kong Regiment has been organized and trained as a light reconnaissance regiment, so that the emblem being presented today, the first ever to be held by this regiment in its own right, is the single guidon of a reconnaissance regiment. Interesting too, it carries the battle honor Hong Kong, won by the Hong Kong Volunteer Defense Corps in 1941. Turn to its original place. Orders have now been given to march off the old colour. Here you see it moving forward once again. Even 
even more than the trooping you've just witnessed. Really is the most solemn, the saddest part of the whole therapy. Now the lumps in many throats down below, the old and bold who have known these colours and the regiment for so long. guards, number one and four guards, have moved round to form a three-sided square with number two and three guards. And now on in front of you, you see the drums being placed. to my 
microphones being positioned. And now from the rear, here comes the new Guidon. Still, at this moment, she. Reverend Francis Hugh, Bishop of Hong Kong. But it is also stated in Queen's Regulations that as many other faiths as possible should be represented. In the UK, this would probably be Protestant, Catholics, Methodists. But here in Hong Kong, there are all sorts of many more colourful bodies who, as you see, are represented this evening. Thus, as much as men in all ages have made for themselves signs and emblems of their allegiance to their rulers and of their duty to uphold those laws and institutions which God's providence has called them to obey, we, following this ancient and honored custom, stand before God this day to ask his blessing on this freedom and to pray that it may be an abiding symbol of our duty towards our sovereign and our country, and a sign of our resolve to guard, preserve, and sustain the great traditions of bravery and self-sacrifice of which we are the proud inheritors. Let us pray. Almighty God, from whom all power and wisdom are derived, we humbly beseech you to bless your servant, our gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth. Let your grace enlighten her, your goodness confirm her, and your providence protect her, and grant that she and all who are in authority under her may advance your glory and the welfare of her people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, yes, our lady, God, most who Francis from your Hugh. throne beholds all the kingdoms of the earth, have regard unto our land, the service. that it may continue a place and a people to serve you to the end of time. Guide the government of this great commonwealth and grant that all who live beneath our flag may be mindful of that threefold cross, that they may work for the good of others according to the example of him who died in the service of man, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Remember, O Lord, what you have wrought in us and not what we deserve. And as you have called us to your service, make us worthy of our calling through Jesus Christ our Lord. The commanding officer calls the regiment to attention whilst the bishop moves forward to lay his hand Our help on the in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, by whose word all things are made holy, pour out your blessing on this freedom and grant that whoever use it in accordance with your will and your law and with a spirit of thanksgiving may experience by your power health in body as he invokes your most holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven holy, holy be your Lord. name. Your Lord. kingdom Lord. come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, who rules over all things, except we beseech you our service this day. Bless what we have blessed in your name. Let your gracious favor rest on those who shall follow the greed on now about to be committed to their trust. Give them courage, and may their courage ever rest in their sure confidence in you. May they show self-control in the hour of success, patience in the time of adversity, and may their honor lie in seeking the honor and glory of your great name. Guide the counsels of those who shall lead them and sustain by your help in time of need. Grant that they may also faithfully serve you in this life, that they fail not finally to obtain entrance into your heavenly kingdom through the merits of your blessed Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O the eternal God, full of mercy and truth, Look upon us, your servants, the Royal Hong Kong Regiment, the volunteers, and grant that, supported by the power of your love and united in Holy Trinity, we may loyally serve you. And remembering those who have gone before us, we may be found worthy of our calling through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord God, when you give to your servants to endeavor any great matter, grant us to know that it is not the beginning but the continuing of the same unto the end, until it be thoroughly finished, which yields the true glory, through him who for the finishing of your work laid down his life, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with you forever. Amen. Bishop now moves back to join the other religious dignitaries who incidentally include the Reverend Right Reverend Baker, Bishop of Hong Kong, Macau, the very Reverend J.W. Foster, chaplain to the regiment, Reverend P.J. O'Rourke, another chaplain to the regiment, Reverend C.S. Clark. You can see the Reverend Chung, the Muslim Imam of Hong Kong, Reverend Kwok Kong, President of the Hong Kong Buddhist Association, and the Sikh Granti Sahib. They all now line up to the side, allowing the party to come through to collect the new guidon. The guidon is handed to His Excellency the Governor, who in turn places it in possession and hands it over to the guidon warrant officer, W2CJ Pintos, 
And here again, another piece of tradition. Whilst colours are carried by ensigns, a guidon is carried by a warrant officer. And His Excellency will now address the parade. Colonel, officers and members of the Royal Hong Kong Regiment, I need hardly say how happy I am to be able to present to you today the Guidon recently approved by Her Majesty the Queen. My pleasure in being able to perform this duty derives, of course, not only from my being Commandant General of the Regiment and a former member of the Royal Hong Kong Defence Force, but also from my sincere personal regard for you all. The colours carried on parade by the regiment in recent years and for the last time tonight were presented in February 1951 at a ceremony at which I myself, as it happens, was present. They were presented to the survivors of the former Hong Kong Volunteer Defence Corps to replace those buried during the battle for Hong Kong in 1941. They did not therefore actually belong to the regiment, but the new colours that Her Majesty the Queen has approved do belong entirely to the Royal Hong Kong Regiment, and in better keeping with its current reconnaissance role, they are designated as a guidon. The change is one of custom and practice only, your new guidon is as much your symbol to be respected as such as were your previous colours. At such a, a moment, it is perhaps not inappropriate to remind you of the origins and some of the history of volunteering in Hong Kong and to recall the part it has played and continues to play. The regiment had its beginning, of course, in 1854 when the military garrison of Hong Kong was reduced for service in the Crimea. Local volunteers were called for to help fill the gap, and a force of local volunteers has existed in various forms up to the present day. By 1941, this force had become the Hong Kong Volunteer Defence Corps and met its severest test in the battle for Hong Kong it was not found wanting. The battle honour, Hong Kong, emblazoned on both the old colours and the new guidon is a reminder of that gallant action. But circumstances change, and the volunteers have changed with them. Instead of a largely infantry role, the present regiment is organised and equipped primarily to carry out reconnaissance duties. For this, its many bilingual members, with their knowledge of the local terrain, people and customs, are particularly well suited. But the regiment also has other functions. For example, assistance in the maintenance of internal stability is one of them, and an important one. This role it carried out with distinction four years ago, when the regiment was called upon to help with various military duties and to assist the police in a number of ways, earning the respect and admiration of all who saw it in operation. If we want to continue to prosper and to flourish in Hong Kong, stability is an absolute necessity, and its maintenance is, of course, primarily the responsibility of the Royal Hong Kong Police Force and the regular forces. But the community of Hong Kong must play its part too, and there is no better way of doing so than by supporting voluntary organizations
such as the Royal Hong Kong Regiment. In the regiment's volunteers, we have men of many nationalities and walks of life who give up their spare time for the sake of the knowledge that they belong to a body which is dedicated to helping to preserve the well-being of the community. It is by no means an easy task that they have undertaken. It can be hard, uncomfortable, and tiring, but it is always rewarding in that membership of the regiment provides a chance to serve the community in an active manner and in an essential role. Here, I would like to offer our grateful thanks to the many employers and organizations whose staff are members of the regiment and who willingly release them from their ordinary duties to attend camp and undergo training despite the inconvenience. I would like employers to be assured that we depend upon and appreciate their continued support also. And I would like to suggest that they too gain something from their cooperation. It is very noticeable how much more self-reliant, confident, and competent a man can become by reason of the discipline and training he receives in the regiment, with consequent benefit not only to himself, but to his employer also. Moreover, what I have said here applies also to the junior leader's squadron, which the regiment has been running now for the past year. This squadron provides yet another means of giving youth a useful and interesting outlet, and I am glad to see its members represented here this evening. Finally, I am glad to be able to tell you that the establishment of a fifth squadron has just been approved, and that this squadron will be based in Kowloon. I hope this will make it easier for Kowloon residents to come forward, and I hope this expansion will emphasize the trust and confidence which the community places in you. Now, I place the safekeeping of this guidon in your hands and in the hands of all future members of the regiment. And I do so sure in the knowledge that it will provide as honored a symbol and rallying point for them as former colors were for the past members who served the regiment and Hong Kong so well in peace and war. Do your duty, and in so doing, you will be guarding it well. And so after some stirring words from His Excellency the Governor, the Commandant General, the Commanding Officer, Lieutenant Colonel Millen, Your moves Excellency, forward to reply. On behalf of the officers and members of the Royal Hong Kong Regiment, the volunteers, I thank you for your gracious words and for the honor you have bestowed upon us by presenting this guidon. Although the regiment has only recently been established under its present title, it is proud to remember the 117 years of its history dating back to the very beginnings of Hong Kong. In particular, we are proud of the battle honor Hong Kong emblazoned on the guidon in recognition of the gallant deeds of our predecessors of the Hong Kong Volunteer Defense Corps, some of whom are present today. You may be confident, sir, that this guidon, which you have entrusted to our care, will continue to be the symbol of the spirit not only of those who make up the regiment today, but also of those many brave men who have gone before us. We are fully aware that it is our grave responsibility to maintain the strength and qualities of the regiment so that we remain, as our motto is written, nulli secundus 
in Oriente. His Excellency the Governor returns to his place in the dais and the crowd warmly applauds the speeches. His Excellency mounting the dais, accompanied by the Commander of British Forces, General Ward, and they sit down together on the dais. Also there you see the various religious dignitaries returning to their seats, just to the right of the dais. <coughs> party returning to collect their drums as in the background of your picture you see number one guard returning to its original position on the parade likewise at the other end of the parade number four guard has already returned And of course, being a parade, everything is done as a drill movement. Having left the parade, the guidon is left on its own. straight into the vehicles and the guidon too goes up into the scout car 
whose registration we may be able to see later is in fact luckiest of the lucky AM9999. Couldn't be much luckier than that and it's perhaps a good omen for the regiment. There you could perhaps just see the number plate. Let's hope it brings them all the luck they deserve. Commanding officer now marching to the head of the parade. officer marching around behind the band of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. As the vehicles take up their positions behind it. Regimental March, the Middlesex Regiment, Sir Stanley Park. There you see number one guard actually marching past. And a very professional performance too. Here comes number two guard, the first of the mounted guards. Difficult to see. There we are, that's a better picture. And now here comes the guidon. Lower it in salute. by the Keaton Warrant Officer, W2 C.J. Pinto. Number three guard, commanded by Captain R.A. Smelling. And there we have number four guard, Major R. Thompson.
regimental march of the Queen's Regiment, Soldiers of the Queen. You see the band of the Royal Welsh disappearing to the far end of the parade ground. Not on your screen at the moment, the regiment is lining up once again down to the other end of the parade ground. There you see the number one guard lining up again for
found in review order. Discipline. 
there they are, marching past, a special adaptation, musical adaptation, The Spirit of Youth. And a jolly good show too. March past, they receive a rousing cheer from the spectators here. The aim of this body is to achieve self-reliance and personal discipline and thus become good citizens. They are not a military combat unit composed entirely of boys and indeed commanded by boys. Now they're now marching actually onto the parade ground. I'm not in view of the cameras at the moment. Parade has been brought to attention. One by one and for guards will one quick spell it. One quick! One and four guards have been ordered to unfix their bayonets. down the line. Again, terrific applause from all the spectators. three places in front of their respective companies. And now, once again, the guards can re-fix their bayonets. Captain 
Harvey, his ADC, and the Scots Guard. Returning a salute from Commander British Forces, His Excellency's car slowly drives away in front of the spectators to leave the parade. At this moment, one of the British forces, General Ward, has gone back up onto the dais. The Guidon has been given. Spectators remain standing and the regiment presents arms. The vehicle carrying the Guidon moves slowly forward to the regimental march, the leather bottle. bottle, the regiment marches off parade. In the last few minutes of what has really been a truly memorable evening, as I said at the very beginning of this program, we have seen history, not just history, but Hong Kong history, Hong Kong's own history being made. And this is something of which this regiment can forever be very justly proud. And it's 
an occasion and a parade which they and all the spectators here this evening will, I'm sure, long remember. Thank you. 